So this becomes your best friend. This becomes your best friend that doesn't fit under the car. Hey guys, Joe here, and today we are starting to disassemble the Mustang's engine in order to get to that water pump and any accessories that may be bad on the front of the engine, be that alternator, AC compressor, whatever. We'll find out as we get into it. I doubt it's anything major. It might be belt tension or maybe idler pulleys. We'll see when we tear into it. But first thing I have to do is get room to work. Much better, much better. So the first thing you'll notice is that the engine bay is much cleaner. I did that very quickly. I just used some purple power degreaser in order to clean the engine. It was all just dirt. There's still some residual stuff because I didn't wipe it down, which I will do once we do some more maintenance on it. But just overall, I think a clean engine looks better. And thankfully, I don't have to take this off, I hope because I hate those clips that are holding it on, as you saw from that video. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on under the engine cover here. Uh, Airbox, overflow res, which is just held in with a couple of bolts. So that should be pretty easy to get rid of. However, I'm gonna try to leave it connected as much as I can so that it doesn't go anywhere. Hold on, there's an airplane flying over. So this becomes your best friend. This becomes your best friend that doesn't fit under the car. We will find another solution. Anywho, the first thing we're gonna do is start disassembling some of the parts here. Uh, I'm gonna take the engine cover off, but believe it or not, to take the engine cover off, I have to take the strut tower brace off, which is fine because that needed to come off anyway because I'm intending on doing spark plugs and some other maintenance to the engine. So, first thing to remove. Now, for those of you that are wondering, I was a mechanic for 12 years. Uh, only reason I stopped was because of my disabilities and I wanted to make more money, so I did that. So, I appreciate comments, suggestions, things like that. I know what I'm doing. Uh, even though I don't know what I'm doing, I've never taken one of these apart before. I'm not a newbie when it comes to mechanics. So, uh, I know it's righty, loosey, lefty, tidy, all that good stuff, so comments saying I don't know what I'm doing. You don't have to put those in there. I'll just delete them anyways. And I do apologize for fan noise. I'm too hot in here. I'd rather be comfortable. I'll fix it in audio. Yeah, so that's off. Uh, it's actually a much heavier piece than people realize. It's a very big piece of metal. This is not aluminum. This is actually steel that's been painted. So standard on the track pack. I think it was optional on premiums and the California special, but uh, it's a big piece of metal that probably saved this car from getting totaled when it got hit. Here's a tip. If the Mounting points still have the nuts or the bolts for the nuts, put them back. That way you don't have to worry about figuring out where they came from. Now we actually have access to our engine cover. Believe it or not, very simple. You just grab it and pull up. Ta-da! Set that aside. So for those of you wondering what a naked five liter looks like, this is what a naked five liter looks like. Pretty standard design. You got fuel rails up top. You have coil pack covers, which allows you to clean the engine without having to worry about it. Throttle body, drive by wire, pain in my ass, but you know, that's the way we are today. And then looking down into the darkness, you have the front end of the engine. Yay, Woohoo! Luckily, like I said, this is a very basic engine, even though it's a very complicated engine. This is a five liter 
VVTI, which means it has intake cams that are variable for timing, variable valve timing intake. So it's a very nice engine. It's European in design, 32 valve, four cam, lots of power without having a lot of displacement, but it's still using simplified parts. So the water pump is not something goofy like on the old LT1 with the OptiSpark, which sat in front of the water pump. None of that stuff. So just need to clear off the air intake and then we can get to the rest of the engine. So next thing you take off is the air box and this, which is called a sound symposer, which on non-modified exhaust systems like mine, mine has the Roush exhaust, so it covers the noise. This pipes intake noise into the cab of the vehicle to make it sound throatier under acceleration. Not a terrible system, it's superfluous. I may block that off since I have Roush exhaust, who cares, right? So we'll see what happens. But next, airbox. So this is the air intake, air box side, throttle body side. This goes to the PCV, uh, or is that the, anyways, it's a recirculation and this is for the sound symposer. And then this is what enables the sound symposer to get that throttly sound. Air goes in, kind of tumbles around and what comes out of the tube goes into the car. You can replace these with cold air intakes. Doesn't really give you much power, but you can. This air filter has about 10,000 miles on it. I change it every couple of times I do an oil change. I have a new filter for it this time, but uh, it's not too bad. I don't like sit near a bunch of trees and sap and stuff like that. So if I had to, I could reuse it, but I don't need to. So do you remember when I said it's not very complicated? Somebody in this equation may have lied to you. That, uh, that's a coolant chamber block right there. Uh, I'm not sure how many of those have to come off, but I know for sure that one has to come off. That one has to come off. That one has to come off. That's the water pump under there. It's got four bolts holding the front of the water pump on. Hopefully I can get to that without having to take the fans out or the throttle body off, but uh, who knows, maybe I will. Damn. My hopes may be dashed, bro. My hopes may be dashed. Now, this may be a problem that only people like me have or other people that have lowered cars is, is I had to actually lift the car to get the catch pan underneath the front of the engine, which I still can't see. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a me problem, not a you problem. Next thing to do is start taking off this stuff, which I am not looking forward to. We'll see what drains onto the floor. I'm gonna start with the small tube. Actually, what I'm gonna do is release pressure for now, just in case. Not that that's gonna do much, but here we go. What mess? So, sorry about that. I know I had to uh, turn you off there for a second because I was getting super, super pissed just because this one clamp was being a pain in my Patootski. Uh, it was stuck. This engine has never been a part other than having a throttle body and a uh, cam sensor replaced. So, because of that, uh, yeah. 
everything has been basically in C2 for 150,000 miles. And that's a lot of time and mileage for it to be together and running hot, cold, hot, cold, cycling, all that stuff. So I'm probably gonna take the throttle body off just because it will give me more access to the bolts. Don't have to take the fan off. Don't have to take the air box off. Looks like there's only uh, about 10 more bolts that are holding it on. So I'm gonna show you real quick what makes the track pack different from the standard Mustang and then we'll continue on. So looking down in here, the water pump's actually behind the pulley. And this is uh, where the flow comes out of versus having a pipe right there. It actually comes out here and goes into several areas. It comes up from here, goes into the intake. You also have for the heater core lines, which come down. There's That's a heater core line, this is a heater core line. The injectors are down here, not here. And then this whole setup here is designed to come from the radiator up to here, and then it's distributed. But you'll also see I have extra connections on mine. The track pack has engine oil and transmission coolers. So they use coolant to cool all that stuff down. And because of that, there are extra lines. Luckily, I don't have to mess with any of that. I just need to take this bottom hose off and then the belt, and then I should be able to disassemble everything. Like I said, I think I'm gonna take the throttle body off just because it'll give me better access to the rear bolts without having to take that tank out. So I can't stress to you guys how important this next step is. Get a piece of paper, any kind of paper, be it a notebook, and take notes. It'll save you in the long run. Number one, if you look around this engine bay, as I'm doing now, you're looking at different, uh, different stickers here. No, no, no diagram there. No, no, no diagram there. Uh, that sticker. No diagram there. And, uh, yeah, no diagram here. And what I'm referring to is the belt diagram, the belt routing diagram. Now you could search on the internet, you could Google it, you could take all your time and try to figure it out, or you can just take a piece of paper and draw it. You don't have to be even good at it. You just need to know the generalized way it goes on. I used to have notebooks and stuff before one of my storage units got broken into where if I found a tip or a trick that worked on a certain car, such as making your own tools, whatever, I would actually put them in a notebook and drawings and all that stuff and detailed notes so that I knew exactly how to do it. So, Mustang belt. So all you gotta do, very easy, very simple. So you look at it, you're looking at the front of the engine, you draw what you got. So here's the bottom, bottom. Over on the passenger side of the engine, you have a AC compressor. Next in this way, you've got your crank, so you can label them too, AC, crank. Uh, next to that, you've got a tensioner. And next to that, you have your alternator. See? Above that, you have a Uh, another pulley or tensioner and here you have your water pump now you draw a line super complicated I know I know in this case we're okay because the AC is actually driven off of a secondary belt Thusly, it doesn't have to come off. So, the only ones we're worried about right now is the main drive pulleys. So, going from the alternator. From the top of the alternator. Really? Yeah. From the top of the alternator. Underneath this pulley, this pulley goes up over the top of the water pump. 
Water pump comes back underneath this tensioner. Tensioner goes up over the crank and back underneath. I've made it more simplified than it actually is, but you know what? You really don't need to get any worse than that. Or more complicated than that. See that? Very basic design. But now I know. Second belt, first belt. That's all you need, guys. And this is where you also put down if your bolts need a certain torque spec, inch pounds, foot pounds, whatever the case may be, but uh, it's a water pump, who cares? Tight is right. To take this one off, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter wrench on the tensioner pulley. You're gonna put this on here. Now you're gonna need to torque it. That's where a second bigger wrench comes in at play. Yeah, okay. Start by putting the first one on. Yeah. Take your second one, take your box end or closed end, excuse me, and then you're gonna to wanna to put pressure on it. It's gonna take some force. It's designed to hold tension. Once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and slide the belt off of wherever you can get it from. In this case, it's gonna be over the top of the crank. Now, when you let release it, you're gonna come back quite a way. There you go, see? Surprised if you do that. I'm taking a look at this belt, even though it's uh, covered in antifreeze right now, it's actually in very good shape. No damage, no wear, no cracking, no dry rot. So, honestly, I'm probably going to reuse that. Next thing to do is to actually take this pulley off. Tell them for bolts, you are going to need to stop the thing from turning. So what I would suggest is you use a small wrench to hold one bolt while loosening the other three. And then I'll show you a trick I use. Three of the bolts will always be easy. The last bolt will always be a pain in your patootski. I like using patootski if you haven't understood. So basically you're gonna get a pair of vice grips. Don't grip it too hard because if you grip it too hard you could bend some of the metal and then it'd be out of balance and then your engine would be like and nobody wants that. So. Go ahead and do that, and then you can loosen the four bolts that hold your pulley on. Don't lose these, they're kind of important. Or lose them, who cares? It's your choice, I'm not your mother. I might be your mother. I might be your father, I am 40. Also makes a handy dandy frying pan. Not really. So, you've removed your water pump pulley. Great. Now what? As you can see, the water pump pulley is held on by a yoke. And you can... Definitely have some noise in there. So, what next step is to get up onto here. Well, actually, next step is to take this bad boy off and that bad boy off. Heater core line and the distribution block for the lower hose. And uh, then we can take the pump out. So, let's take this off, eh? Probably a Tensky. Yep. Nope. What a flutesky. Dear automakers, get your crap together. Use consistent size bolts. Get yourself some of these if you don't have any of these. These are uh, ratcheting wrenches. They make life so much easier. Uh, sometimes. There we go. I mean, I could just as easily have used a socket, but uh, why? That's a long bolt right there. This does have an O-ring, so be careful. You don't want to damage that. It looks like it also had RTV silicone. So yes, silicone will be necessary. Obviously, heater core hose. You can just do whatever you want with that one. So we're getting there. We's getting there. Is it a major component? Yeah. Let's use an eight millimeter. Okay. Let's think that's a little bit weak. Nah. Just use an eight millimeter. Nobody will care. Buyer will care. That was a buyer, no. Just a bunch of stupid humans. 
the best part is finding all the tools. Over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. 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 Yay! Ha ha ha! This is so fun, not god damn it. I've always traditionally used hand tools just because I prefer to not over torque or put something in at the wrong angle. But it is days like this I miss my my uh my full toolbox. Don't lose your washers. Oh, wow, very long one. Don't lose your uh, ratchet. Yeah, here we go. Leak some more, baby. Number two, and dribble dee dribble dee yay! I really don't care. I've got the pan underneath it. As you can see, we're making a lot more room now. Another O-ring, don't lose it. And we've just got four bolts. So let's see what size they are. Oh good, they're 10 mils. I'm gonna get a deep 10. <laughs> deep 10. <laughs> I love hunting for parts that shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, Mentos. I do apologize, but for some reason, had no two inch extension. I do now. It's the little things, guys. It's the little things that are gonna piss you off when you're working on a car. So be prepared for that, okay? Like I love you guys, but keeping the camera where I am right now is actually getting in my way, so if I move you, that's why. So now that we got the uh, bolts cracked loose, we're gonna go ahead and back those out, take them out, and we should be ready to pull this water pump off. Should be being the operative work. Because even though I looked at pictures, there's gonna be something that screws me. I'm going to put the water pump bolts separate. You may want to do that yourselves. Just to make sure you don't get them confused with any other bolts. Because they look just like the bolts that go into other places. And my nerve damage and my arthritis are conspiring to make this very difficult. Be gentle. Don't just start prying as much as you want to. And trust me, I want to. Like I said, I love you guys like you were my own children, but you were in the way, kind of like children. And I don't have kids, but you know what I mean. But I needed to move you, so I turned you off in order to pull out the pump. As you can see, I don't know how well you can hear it. Let me turn off that fan real quick. Yeah, it's got a lot of noise. It's got a lot of drag, which is what's making me believe wholeheartedly that this is completely fried. Um, even if it wasn't, the car's got 150,000 miles on it, so, but yeah. If you actually look, it's really hard to see on camera, but uh, the, the pulley is not actually rotating straight anymore. So yeah, there is degradation of this, uh, this pulley, which was making all the noise. So. Pulley is out, I need to go get a new one. I'm also gonna get some plugs because we are gonna do a full tune-up to the car. Not a full, full tune-up. I'm not like changing timing belt or anything, but plugs, oil change. I have to refill the antifreeze, all that good stuff. But first things first, I gotta get another one of these. So that is it for today. What I'm going to do is kind of just leave all this crap sitting, uh, edit you together so you get the first part of the video. Let me show you inside the cavity. As I was saying, it's not that complicated. It just has a water pump there that drives out to here where it meets up with the distribution block because it would be too crammed under there to have it all in there. So just a standard belt driven water pump. There are options for electric re electrically driven ones, but I'm not gonna do that mainly because I don't wanna monkey with the way this thing operates. And it's not like I need to regain any parasitic loss. Typically an electric water pump, number one, better control. Number two is for if you want to run superchargers and things like that, that could put more draw on the engine. By taking the water pump out of the equation, you are then freeing up that extra bit of horsepower. It's not gonna matter in this car. 420 is plenty. I've never chipped it, never done anything. I should though, and maybe we'll do that in the future. Let me know if you want me to do something like that. But for today, that's it. I'm gonna clean up my tool mess and uh, clean up the floor underneath the car, which is atrocious, and uh, get the heck out of here. Now this video is not a how-to, it's not a hey, run out and do this yourself. This is a, if you have 
any kind of mechanical inclination at all, if you can change plugs in a lawnmower or do anything like this, you can probably do this in your garage over the course of the weekend, no problem. If you're not familiar with automobiles, I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself, but it shouldn't be too expensive to do since you didn't have to take the fans off the reservoir or anything. All you did was lose a bunch of coolant and have the cost of the replacement parts. So if you don't do your own work, find a mechanic you trust. That's another big one. The next video you'll see in this will be when I do the oil change, the spark plugs, put the water pump back in, and then we'll take it out for a drive. Even when I'm done with that, I'll probably leave the strut power brace off so I can give the engine a good steam cleaning. I'll take you along for that and show you the proper way to do that so you don't blow out coil packs and plugs and all that stuff. So, if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you'd like to see more videos on maintenance and things like that, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe wherever the heck that is. And, as always...